There are 30 slug types in Britain, but this is the one that really hits the farmer. Derosiras reticulatum, the grey field slug. Only three and a half centimetres long, but you could have millions to the hectare. And if you have, you've got trouble. And this is where it all starts, in small clutches of tiny eggs. Even the most conservative estimate says that every slug will lay 500 eggs in its two years of life. And that really does mean every slug, because they are hermaphrodite. Spring and autumn are the most active times for egg laying, although as long as the weather is reasonable, they will be laid throughout the year in moist cracks as deep as the slug can get. When she's unloaded her eggs, mother disappears, and from then on, it's every slug for itself. If the conditions are warm and humid, these eggs could hatch in two or three weeks, but in cold weather, they could take as long as two months. When they hatch, the surrounding soil must be damp, with a moisture content between 60 and 80%. But during incubation, they can survive up to 80% water loss. Even so, this egg doesn't look as though it's going to make it. It's just too hot and dry. But for everyone that doesn't make it, there are plenty that do. At first, the tiny things browse on algae. This keeps them going for a while but it's not long before they're off in search of more sustaining food. This youngster may have bitten off more than it can chew. But what about this one, taking on a grain of wheat? Because it can't burrow down into the earth for protection and moisture, the slug appreciates the modern farmer's tendency to adopt minimal cultivation techniques, which provide plenty of safe nooks and crannies below the surface. Foraging for food, a slug might travel as much as five meters in one night, moving by peristaltic muscle contractions over a lubricating slime trail which is secreted from the pedal gland. It's a style of locomotion that makes it virtually unstoppable in its search for food. This slug is about to tackle some seedling oilseed rape, the stage when it's at its most vulnerable. Take a closer look at its mouth. It's only got one jaw, shaped like a scythe. And down below, instead of a lower jaw, there's a radula. It's like a rasp, and it combines the functions of lower jaw, tongue, and teeth. Magnified 10,000 times, this is what the surface of the radula looks like. The teeth point backwards into the mouth, making it a very efficient destroyer of crops. There's usually time for two foraging trips between dusk and dawn. The slug fills up with food in the early evening and then slides off somewhere safe to digest it. Just before dawn, it comes out again to find more food so that it can fill up before going back to rest during the day. Finding its way back home isn't a problem. A slug's sense of smell is advanced. And some scientists think that its homing skill has something to do with magnetic orientation. Whoops! <laughs> Obviously, its eyes don't play a very big part. They're those little black specks at the end of the upper antennae. 
they can really only tell light from dark. Halfway down on the right-hand side, there's a hole for breathing. It's called a pneumostome, and it opens directly into the lung. It looks quite a delicate little thing, doesn't it? But don't let that fool you. The grey field slug is a cold-blooded creature that can survive and thrive in very tough conditions. Now for the strangest part of the slug story, its sex life. It begins in the conventional manner with the search for a partner. And for a slug, that means taking to the slime trail where it can pick up all sorts of interesting information. Pheromones tell of mature slugs nearby and even which way they're going. When they meet up, they circle for a while, nose to tail, sizing each other up. It's not always love at first sight, but sometimes the odd love bite gets things going. The thing to remember about this situation is that slugs are hermaphrodite, so what happens is a cross-fertilization rather than a normal copulation. From the genital pore at the side of the head, there is a cone-shaped protrusion called a sarcobellum. It's a tickling stick, really, used to stimulate the partner. This sort of thing goes on for some time. And then, at the height of the excitement, there is a sort of explosion in which both partners evert the whole of their genitalia and bring them into alignment with each other. Now the spermatophores, or sperm sacs, are exchanged so that each partner's eggs can be fertilized. And that brings us right back to where we started. More slugs, more trouble for the farmers. We know that oilseed rape is encouraging the build-up of slugs, and the winter cereals that follow it are particularly vulnerable. So, what's to be done? Of course, the slug doesn't have things all its own way. The occasional hedgehog may stop a few. And the calibid beetle will do its bit. But neither the calibid beetle nor the hedgehog will be as reliable and effective as Draza. Bayer have been making Draza for over 20 years. Its effectiveness as a slug bait has been proved again and again. It can be used at any time of the year, whenever slugs are active. It's quite simply the most effective and efficient slug bait available.